Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here, and this is how to use Mudsdale. Yes, Mudsdale is really strong. So let's go and check it out. Pure ground typing. That's pretty solid right there. That when we look at it, we just have to worry about grass, ice, and water. Super effective hits. We do get the poison and rock resistances, as well as that electric immunity. So good start right there on that ground typing, and it gets even better when we look at ground offensively. That's a lot of super effective hits. Electric, Fire, Poison, Rock, and Steel. It's pretty much why any Pokemon that can take the Earthquake will take that Earthquake, even if it doesn't get the same type attack boost. But Ground-type Pokemon, they just get to run away with that insane boosted Earthquake, insane boosted ground damage, and it does pretty well. Pretty much the only thing you have to worry about is flying. So try to find, like, team compositions and stuff that synergize with this. But now it's time for Mudsdale stats. And since the beginning, since we first saw this Pokemon revealed, it's like, oh... This Pokemon has insane potential to be good. It's a big, heavy Pokemon. It looks like it can, get pretty it can be strong. And then the stamina ability, which we will talk about in a bit, is nuts. And then the stats are, are beautiful. 100 on the hit points, 100 on defense, 85 on special defense. This thing is a tank. And it still manages the 125 attack. So Game Freak, bold choice right here. It was They were like, you know what? Let's see what we can maybe get away with. Because 35 on the speed... Great, that's excellent. Like, you could have given it 40, 50, 60 speed, it's the same difference. That once you get under that 70 threshold, pretty much everything is going to outspeed you forever. And this is meant to be a tanky Pokemon that takes the hit and then does way more in return. 55 on the special attack, we didn't have any dream of, of attempting some kind of special attacking on, on this Pokemon. So that is going to be enough right there. Excellent stat distribution. But then we go and check out the moveset of Mudsdale. It's ground... With some ground, and a lot more ground, and some more ground. Maybe some rock, and then some normal, but the, then a lot of ground. So we don't get a lot of moveset diversity on the Mudsdale. Not really any sustain or anything, but I don't think that matters. That we knew what we were signing up for with the Mudsdale. Especially if it has this great of stats, this great of an ability. That the moves, or there'd be some kind of restriction right there. But it's not even that bad. We still get the Rock Slide, that's all that mattered. So it's like Earthquake, Rock Slide, we can hit ground, we can hit some other Pokemon. Then we have some Fighting that can be added in. N nice little nice little benefit right there. We have Close Combat if we choose to use that move. And then we can also go and look at some other things like the Heavy Slam. This Pokemon is deceptively heavy. It weighs 2,000 pounds. So a Pokemon this heavy means Heavy Slam is going to almost always be doing full damage. So you can take that as well, which is that's a nice little touch. Alright, we don't have like insane super effective everything coverage but it is certainly more than enough for the mudsdale then we can go and check out a move set so naturally with that stamina ability this pokemon's defense is raised by one stage after it is damaged by a move doesn't have to make contact just every time it's hit gains defense for free which means the assault vest combo that was like the first thing i saw when you read stamina you think stamina plus assault vest this Pokemon's gonna be really good, and it works out just like that. So, EV investment, adamant nature, max out hit points, max out the attack, get this thing as tanky as possible, stamina is gonna make its defense go up, assault vest is gonna make its special defense go up, and then you just try to slam everything for the most damage possible. Like, we're close. We're just five points under a Garchomp with a Stab Earthquake, a really high base power, heavy slam, or something like that, and then we can also run the Rock Slide, and we have Facade. So, I have Facade here for a little bit of tech that Mudsdale is going to be a very easy target to Scald or just throw a Will-O-Wisp on. So that's pretty much the first thing. When you see a Mudsdale, it's like, yo, get this thing status, get it burned, hit it with Scald, because that's super effective damage on top of the burn, which means that if you have Facade, it doesn't completely shut you down. That a burn will ruin all of Mudsdale just like that. Like, it might get tanky, and it might try to do something afterwards, but it's going to be fairly useless. So the facade at least gives it some kind of redeeming factor on that damage and still hits really well. Rock Slide, pretty self-explanatory. They have a flying type Pokemon. You hit them on the Rock Slide. You're going to get try something to get out of that. And then the Earthquake is just your mad, mad damage right there. But that's kind of it on the Mudsdale. Like, very one-dimensional Pokemon, at least in singles. That if we want to run in doubles, then we have to think about some other things. Do we run the Rock Slide or do we give up the Rock Slide for the High Horsepower? Because High Horsepower has 95 base power. So that's going to mean that's not getting the split damage in doubles like the Earthquake will. So you can get one single target massive hit. But at the same time, Earthquake 
it's too good to not run that you do need to consider synergies as well that is my allied pokemon able to protect right now can i earthquake both opponents to get the most effectiveness like you might need an ice a rock or something on your side of the field as well to deal with a flying type pokemon since your flying coverage is going to be reduced maybe you don't run the facade Maybe you do, depending if there's a lot of status in the meta, then that's maybe where you can bring the Rock Slide back in, but the split damage means you're not going to be as effective against Flying Pokemon. So it does get a little more thought intensive on the Mudsdale when you think about synergy and stuff, but the base moveset is effectively going to be the same. But then when we go and look at Mudsdale, there's some other things that we can maybe run. The Lumberry, if we aren't going to be running the Assault Vest, maybe a Lumberry could work out. That's going to give us a little extra staying power, but even then, like, we're still going to be doing good, really good because Mudsdale synergizes incredibly well with a special defense tank so maybe you could play to run a mudsdale like that you give it a lumberry you give it a citrus berry that way if your opponent only has like physical pokemon left in the game you know say they only brought two special attackers or something like that and then you can special wall them you bring in your sweepers and you remove any of your if you remove every special attack that your opponent can possibly throw at you mudsdale just wins which means that the Assault Vest doesn't really work anymore. So that's why you bring in a Lumberry, which is going to be a useful item in, in status. The Citrus Berry gives you a lot of that sustain power. And then the Stamina. No matter what they try to do, the more they try to hurt you, the stronger you get against them. Especially if they are going to be left with just physical attackers. And then the more that they try to hurt you with their only physical attackers left, the stronger you get. And then you can just clean them up. Also, Super Power is an option. Same with the Close Combat. I don't really see too much of a difference between the two, that you lower your defense and special defense, which is bad, but lowering your attack and defense is still also pretty bad. Really, if you're running this, it means that you're bringing in Mudsdale, you're trying to nuke out an opponent, and then you switch back out into a tanky Pokemon. So if you support Mudsdale with some tankiness, that's going to work out really well, and I think now I can actually start making like some Overwatch connections, you know? If you if you run Mudsdale, that's kind of like your off tank, that you can still have other tank roles, and Mudsdale is going to apply damage, and also just be a re really reliable Pokemon as well. So Mantine is going to be a really good support on that special defense right there, and then you could also bring in another tanky Pokemon. So if you have like a physical tank, or just a really well round tank, a specialized special defense tank, you can still run the Mudsdale, and then also have like three sweeping slots, and you're not really going to lose on damage, you're not losing on tankiness, which means you can make those switches frequently. Mudsdale, it's like, alright, I need to throw out the superpower right here, Mudsdale usually is like, I don't see any choice reasons to run Mudsdale that has enough damage. The Life Orb doesn't, like, find any surprising KOs against any other Pokemon. It's just such a reliable Pokemon that you just choose the correct move at the right time, and then if things are bad, you can switch out. So, you superpower, you make yourself weak, kind of doesn't matter. Close combat does mean you get to attack multiple times. So, against a physical attacker, the close combat might come in handy a bit more because, alright, say they're three-hit KOing you. Use close combat. Well, they just hit you, so they boost your defense. You neutralize that. You're still a three-hit KO, so you can use that close combat and get some effectiveness out of it without really losing too much. And it depends if you're, like, sacrificing for the Lumberry or the Assault Vest. That's going to be some of the synergy right there with Mudsdale. Now let's go and check out some damage calculation when it comes to Mudsdale. So I was just like, all right, how do we do against Flying-type Pokemon, at least with the Rock Slide? Standard Flying-type Pokemon. We have Ori Kurio, maxing out the hit points, maxing out the defense. So... Like, the worst case scenario, base 75-70 flying Pokemon, we still two-shot them on the rock slide. Which means that if, say, if it's like just a regular Pokemon, so let's go 90-90. Zero EVs, 95 base hit points, 95 base defense. How do we do on the rock slide? Because when we're considering sweeping, a lot of sweeping is like, oh, I need to one-shot this person all the time. But Mudsdale is a lot tankier. It's a lot more of just a bruiser kind of Pokemon. So because of that, yeah, even if it has very high uninvested bases, well, Rock Slide's still going to come in. Actually, let's let's see how the Mantine does. Because even though Mantine is going to be like a really bad thing with Water-type hits, we still get to two-shot it, and the Scald comes close to threatening us, but it's it's going to be like really weird matchups right there. And just shows like, yeah, the Rock Slide damage against Flying-type Pokemon really adds up, and Mudsdale just gets even better. Garchomp! I wanted to bring Garchomp, see how this worked out. Well, because that stamina ability, Garchomp just doesn't get to do anything to us, and we can two-shot the Garchomp. Garchomp doesn't two-shot us back. And I did want to see how this looked with the Life Orb. With the Life Orb, it's a bit more sketchy, but it's still not like a guaranteed KO, because, all right, Garchomp hits you once, your defense goes up, and then it's close, but not quite. So you, there's still like a favorable chance that you will get the KOs onto the Garchomp. Also, if you already have any existing defense boost, say opponent hits you, you knock them out, Garchomp comes in. If you're still in like relatively good health, then it's a plus one into a plus two, and the Garchomp pretty much 
has no chance of doing it. But that just kind of shows the comparison right here. It's not like, oh, the Mudsdale versus Garchomp matchup, which one's better? It just kind of shows how much more useful Mudsdale can be, even against other very strong Pokemon like Garchomp, or really anything your opponent's going to be throwing at you, that you just two-shot everything. That that's like how Mudsdale works. It two-shots everything. So what you're looking to do is hit super effectives on the opponent's Pokemon. Actually, let's pull out the Sylveon. Sylveon is going to be a bloodbath. Does the heavy slam find that one hit KO on the Sylveon? Because if it does, then that just kind of shows like why it would be such a good thing. Yep, Sylveon goes down to the heavy slam. And if we add in the item for the assault vest, it's still not looking good. The Hi Hyper Voice on Sylveon does solid damage, but it's just going to boost our defense in return. Heavy Slam knocks out the Sylveon, so that's just kind of showing even choice specs, pixelate, some of the highest damage in the game with that Sylveon. Now could be enough to stand up against the Mudsdale, makes Mudsdale even stronger. The KOs just kind of go all over the place. So if you're finishing off opponents in one hit, you're going to be around for a while. If they only have physical attackers, you're going to be around for a very long time. And then we can think about like double battles, um, having a Pokemon that's throwing Heal Pulse on you works out really well. Maybe even also going back to single battles instead of Lumberry, uh, as we as we saw right here, we can just kind of run the Rocky Helmet. There's all kinds of things that work with the Mudsdale. I mentioned the Citrus Berry earlier, that if you keep gaining stats and then you get some health back, you are lacking in the sustain, so stamina with uh, Citrus Berry could be a very powerful combo. In double battles, yeah, just keep your Mudsdale safe, and it's just going to be a strong, reliable Pokemon for you. Heal Pulsing it could have insane amounts of returns on it. So, Mudsdale has Assault Vest, already really good special defense. Even with that, actually, if you're running it in double battles and you're boosting it, you know, maybe even go 200 on the attack and then put something into the special defense, not full special defense, you know, put the rest into special defense. That way the Pokemon is going to be able to do something right there. Also, the screen was off of region right there. But yeah, that's kind of what other things we can consider when looking into Mudsdale, because any little special offense is going to work, and as we're taking damage from the stamina, well, if we're getting heal pulsed, if we're getting sustained, it doesn't matter in the end. We're gonna, we're just gonna be so tanky in our defenses that it's all about the special defense after that. So those are some of the matchups that we can look forward to. And then I was just thinking other random Pokemon like Silvalli. How do we do against Silvalli? Well, the superpower one shots it if it's normal. So super effective hits on a base 95, 95 defense hit points. That's going to work really well with the superpower right there against normal rock other kinds of Pokemon like that, and even then, like, Silvalli doesn't return a lot of damage, multi-attack, that's going to be physical, and look how much it does on that normal, so if we're taking, like, a neutral multi-attack, yeah, we, we tank that up super, super well, and also Silvalli has to hold the memory or something like that, even for, like, boosting more damage with the Life Orb, similar Pokemon, they're, they're going to try to put that damage down onto you, but they're not just, they're just not going to find it, and then, okay, multi-attack is a physical hit, so stamina boosts your defense, which means less damage happens, and you're either converting two hit KOs on so many Pokemon, or you're getting the one-shots on the super effective hits, or something like that, and then you're even tankier, you still have a little bit of health, so you can maybe even survive the next hit, and that is how ridiculous Mudsdale is going to be. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.